one. We're going to take you back to the past. Oh, wait a minute. We, we're not to allowed to say time. We're not allowed to say that. Yeah, you have to you have to sing it. Back in time. Welcome to, to today's world. Gaming okay. Stooges podcast on uh, a year known as 2011, which was, for those of you who don't know, uh, not a year that Gaming Stooges was doing year in reviews. So we're starting, we're going to go backwards and start talking about the years. It, it as is they came. the years, it is the year of uh, Gaming Stooges inception. But Spoiler. Spoiler, but, you know, that comes later. Right. So, uh, I believe it was Landon's idea that we would uh, start doing t- year in reviews for years before uh, we really had the chance to do this kind of content. So, start... Are we and... blaming someone? Is that no, what's happening? No, I'm, I'm giving you credit. <laughs> oh. It's, it's a positive thing. Take it. I will take blame. I will take no credit. Oh, okay. You guys do a 2012 year in review? Um, because I remember like, I don't kind of year. Yeah, I we might have sort of not really. We definitely started doing stuff in 2013. That's for sure. Uh, the 2012 was definitely, but 2011 we're doing first because uh the 3ds came out in 2011. Spoilers, so pretty big year. So we thought it'd be a good year to start off on since we've been covering Boilers a lot of. For th- 13 years ago, folks. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Landon and I put together a list of major releases and a couple major events that happened th- over the course of the year. Landon organized it into a nice uh, Google uh, spreadsheet. So, once again, I will only take blame. Not credit. <laughs> not credit. So, you better be blaming me for this. I, I blame you for the spreadsheet for sure. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Starting in the month of January, we had, uh, and we're going to just do what we usually do. Uh, if you want to talk about it, say Smash. If you don't want to talk about it, say Pass. We got the fourth was the release of Lost in Shadow for Wii. I vaguely remember this game, but I never played it. So pass. pass. I unfortunately, I, I threw this on here because I thought maybe Jack had played it by now. I have yet to play it. I remember this game. It's like it, yeah. you play as like a boy's shadow in like the yeah. shadows of environments. And it's like, it's a neat concept. I just never, just never played it. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to play it myself. Uh, so unfortunately, pass. Okay. Uh, oh, and before I go on, um, I do want to mention that for the most part, we're going off of the initial release of a game. If it was ported... We don't count a port that came out this year when the original came out on a different year, uh, but we will count except like for, we will count. For v. Yeah, we will count uh, like remakes, remasters, and stuff like that, though. Typically, so uh, on the eleventh. Speaking of which, we have two games that came out. Uh, the first of them, I'm just gonna get it out of the way because we're not gonna talk about it. Is Kingdom Hearts Recoded for Nintendo DS? Uh, I haven't played yeah. it yet. I am interested in playing it, but I don't have anything to say about it yet, so pass. Uh, and the other yeah, one... Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that you haven't played it, honestly. I just haven't gotten around to it. Like, I plan on it. I do. But, like, I just haven't gotten you, around to it. Do you own it? Oh, yeah, I own it. I have it, oh, and okay. I have uh, 305 uh, five, eight days over two, so... Uh, yeah. And then the Fun. more the more important game that came out for you guys, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective... For Nintendo Ghost DS. Trick and a Detective Baby. Smash, 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 smash. You, smash. Have, you have the floor. I have never played the DS version. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I've played it on an emulator. But uh, no, I love Ghost Trick. Uh, this game rules. Uh, great characters, great writing. Uh, you know, it's basically an Ace Attorney game, all things considered. Uh, but. It has a really unique it has really unique gameplay. You play as a ghost and try and like alter uh reality and change uh or save people from dying in a lot of cases. Um it's it's really fun. Uh, there we invented a lot of our classic iconic voices from that uh stream series. Yep. True. 
it truly is the can't I change the future of video games. It really is. Can't I change the future? No, but you can tell me whether or not you've played this next game. Released on January 18th was Little Big Planet 2 for PS3. I have played this game. It wait. I haven't. Have I played this game? Have you? He's like, am I confusing this with the first game? I'm confused. I, I don't know if I'm confusing it with the third game or not. When did the third game come out? Did all th- did all three of them come out on PS3? I am so out of the loop on yes. this. Yes. Oh, wow. All uh, three of them came out on PS3, but the third okay. one was also a PS4 release. No, okay. okay. I, have played, I have played this game because, a uh, spoiler alert, we'll get to it later, but I've got my PS3 uh, for the first time this year in 2011, uh, and it was bundled with this game and Ratchet and Clank All for One. And... I played through Little Big Planet 2. I constantly forget that I have, honestly. Uh not a super memorable game in my opinion, and I have not gone back to it in a very long time. Like I get the appeal, but like it's just not the most exciting 2D platformer I've ever played and there's a lot of other games that I would play before this. Definitely the big draw of these games was the level creator. Oh, yeah. Because you can, like, make your own levels and play other people's levels, and there's some really unique design. That's what put put Little Big Planet 1 on the map was the creation aspect. So if it's not up your alley, then, you know, it's not going to really be for you. Uh, and the last game that was really notable that came out this month that we have on here is uh, on the 25th, the release of Dead Space 2, which is available on Windows, PCs, Xbox 360, and PS3. Uh, pass. Pass. I've briefly played this game a long time ago, but pass. All right, moving on to February. Uh, we got the release of Mario Sports Mix for Wii on the 7th. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Fuck this game. This game sucks. Love the Mets. (laughs) Love the Mets, baby. This 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 game was like the beginning of the end for Mario sports titles, in my opinion. Like it was just you would think like, oh, they have a you know a collection of different sports games in one package. Uh, you know, basketball, hockey. Uh, is it rugby and tennis? I think I hold on. I need to see. I threw this on here because I knew he had opinions and they were. I I do have opinions. I don't even remember what the fucking games are. I know there's basketball opinions and hockey, which sucks because this is like the like besides Mario 3, you know, Mario uh hoops three on three like this is like the only mario basketball game That's yeah a shame. Oh, okay it's it's basketball volleyball dodgeball and hockey um the thing is none of the sports in this game are very fleshed out at all and there's nothing about like each one that makes it like worth replaying more than once or twice it's like it's the Mario sports titles are so much better when they actually try to like put in a lot of effort into just a single sport. Like the, yeah. cause the Olympic, the Olympic games suffer from this as well, where they just kind of feel like mini game collections. Uh, and that's kind of the case here too, honestly. Um, like Mario sports titles from here until like 2017 or 2018. I forget what year the um, Mario Tennis, tennis Aces came out. Yeah, Mario Tennis Aces. I think that was 2018. Because um, that was a good one. Um, and like the sports titles started to creep up in quality after that. They're still not as good as they used to be, but this was like the I beginning was say, of the year. Let's put it this opinion. way. It's funny that people complain about Mario sports titles nowadays when there was just the last decade leading up to like into the switch was just not good 
it yeah. really was not honestly like I was so, was so much better now than they were like I'll seven eight years ago i'll take mario golf super rush over anything that came out at the end of the ds's life up until the switch honestly like just putting that out there uh so we're gonna move on to the next title Released on the 14th for the Nintendo DS, Dragon Quest VI Realms of Revelation. That is the remake of Dragon Quest VI. Land. I own this one. Did you play I haven't it? Played it. I haven't played it yet. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that, damn. You're supposed to be the Dragon Quest fan here. Hey, all cards on the table, I've played Dragon Quest IX, eleven. A little bit of the fucking Wii game. It sucks. Uh, one and two, and monsters. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's still more. That's still more than either of us. You know what's yeah, funny is I, I have, own a lot of Dragon Quest games. I have now played more Final Fantasy games than he has Dragon Quest games. I've never claimed to be the Dragon Quest guy. True. I just am of this group. Yeah, just because yeah. Just, by just. I played more. Yeah, you're not. You're, you're not quite a Katie yet. No, no, no. but that's uh, fine. I I own a lot of Dragon Quest games. Oh wait, I also play Treasures and. I'm sure you'll get uh, to monsters. these games at some point, right? Yeah, I I, I w want to play these games. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yes. All right, uh, and then the other game, uh, the next game. There's two games that came out the day after this. Uh, we'll get the first one out of the way real quick. We have Hyper Dimension Neptunia for the PS3. That is the first Hyper ne Dimension Neptunia game. Cloud your thoughts? Haven't played it yet. Heard bad things. Probably will never play it in that form. Thankfully, it got a remake that doesn't suck ass. I will play that one when I get to it. Rebirth 1, yay! Uh, well, actually, yay. technically, there's two remakes now. Because there's Rebirth 1 and then there's also Reverse for PS5. So I guess I could play either of those. But definitely not the original on PS3. That one was shit. Fuck that game. All right. Uh, and then the other game, more importantly, that came out uh, for both Xbox 360 and PS3 was Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Fate of Two Worlds. There's another entry later in this list that uh, is really funny. And I'm going to save everything I have to say about that game until then. Because I technically have not played this game. Okay. Uh yeah, it's and then funny. <laughs> we'll get so, there. Capcom's so fucking dumb. Especially in the mid to er the early to mid 2010s, like it was worse than at any other point. It's Oh my god. Like, it, we'll we'll get to it. We'll, let's skip a, uh. let's skip ahead. We got De Blob 2 on the 22nd. We had three games. The first one is De Blob 2, uh released on a bunch of platforms. You got DS, PS3, 360, Wii. I have to assume that the DS version is not the same game. I would be surprised if it is. I have not played this game. Jack for De Blob the Blob 2. Yeah. I I have not played De Blob 2 on the DS. I've only played them on the Wii. Uh I love the Wii games. Uh I think they're really underrated and like no one played them back in the day, but they're fucking sick. Uh really fun games with good soundtracks. Never played the DS version though. No no fucking clue what it's even like. Oh, now he knows what he has to do after this. Damn, I got to seek out a copy of De Blob 2 for the DS. I'm going to see how much it's on eBay. Anything for you to add for De Blob 2, Landon? I'm going to see how much the DS version's on eBay. Okay. Uh, while you do that, uh, Killzone 3 was released on PS3. I haven't played yeah. it. Neat. Cool. Uh, I the... still have... I've only played a little bit of Killzone Shadowfall. I did not hate the game. I thought it was pretty decent. Um, They're just so like first-person not... shooters, right? Yeah, they are. Um, so, like, they have a pretty unique setting. Um, I feel like if uh, a certain fourth person was here, he'd have things to say about some of these games. Yeah. But I'm not opposed to this game. Aren't Killzone... Isn't Killzone, like, a gritty cyber... Or not see cyber steampunk kind of game? Ish? It's definitely, like, a future... Futuristic-esque. Because uh, yeah. what, what little I've seen of it, the vibes I got was like 
Midgar from Final Fantasy VII sort of, like, atmosphere. From what I remember, that's... Yeah. Okay, so, I'm not too far off. And then the last game that came out that's noteworthy in February is uh, Radiant Historia for DS. Uh, Jack, you could get a complete in-box version of De Blob 2 for the Nintendo DS for, like, ten bucks. There you go. Damn, I, I guess I gotta play De Blob 2 for the DS. Yeah, like, there, there's some cheap-ass copies. Anyway, Radiant Historia, I owned the original DS game, never played it, sold it. Bought the 3DS version, because that... Uh, and I played through that shit. That game fucking slaps. This is a Atlas. Atlas. Someone qu- uh, check me on that. I'm I'll pretty sure this is an it's, Atlas RPG. It's Atlas, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is an Atlas RPG that is really good. Um, and it's it's one of those that just didn't go anywhere because, you know, it's not Persona. Or Edge yeah. Odyssey, for that matter. But it has a really cool, um, like, uh, mechanic where you're going through time and you're changing some events because you're trying to prevent the destruction of the world. So you're, like, jumping between two different timelines where uh, a major split happens and uh, you, like, have to solve puzzles in one and then go back to the other. And it's, like, really well done. Um, fantastic game. It's where we get the... It's the enemy line yep. from. That is true. So, fucking great game. Uh, play. You know what? I I never played the fucking DS original, um, but play it. All right. Or play the 3DS version. Before so, we move on, I looked up uh, screenshots of De Blob Two for the Nintendo DS. It's a 2D platformer. That's what I expected. All right, so let's move on to March. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about here. So the first game that came out was Pokemon Black and White for DS on the 6th uh, in North America specifically. Uh, that's that's a good game. I like that game. Remember when this game came out? And, and like, people didn't like internet, it. The internet fucking hated this game for and some it's, reason. It's funny too, because like we were not in that bubble. Like there were yeah. we, we were in our own bubble. Like we were all like, oh, this game's pretty sweet. But like you look anywhere I, else, and like most people are like, this game, meh. I don't like that I can't use Digglypuff and Gyarados and Pikachu for like the tenth time. It's like, bro, dude, these new Pokemon are pro- kind of sick though. They are, and people hated on them for no reason. And now Everyone loves it, although there are some people. There are some, that, yeah. yeah. So there's like there's like a there's like a there's like a new cult, uh, nostalgia culture, and then a new counter nostalgia culture going on with this uh, generation. Uh, but I think that it's I, the these games have definitely, by and large, gotten more love as time has gone on. From day one, I have been of the opinion that these games are great and oh, yeah. some of the best in the series. And everyone else can fuck off. So I'm going to just come out and say it out of if we only consider just like the first initial pair of games of each generation, nothing that came out after in the generation. I think these might be the best pair. Be honest. I think it's still arguable between this and gold silver. Like I would probably go back and forth, but like they're in contention. Like there's I, I would. I would not argue against that. If someone said, if someone, anyway. I don't know if I would necessarily pick them over Ruby and Sapphire, but it, like if someone That's told fair. me black There's and white is the best pair in the franchise, like the best first pair in the franchise, I would say that's a respectable opinion. It's yeah. definitely one of like the better three ones that people could make an actual argument for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause like, uh, diamond pearl. No, Nah, not really. <laughs> like, I, and I say this as a Pearl stand. Like, I used to play a lot of Pearl. It's like, no, if you're gonna play Gen Four, if you want the unbiased take, you play Platinum. Yeah, maybe Brian and then Johnny Pearl. To be honest, yeah, basically anything. Well, Sun and Moon, not so much. Yes. Uh, but Sun and Moon, I mean, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is largely better. Yeah, but what I was what I was going to say, and then I cut myself off, was right. basically anything that released after this game, except for Sun and Moon, like, yeah. 
No. <laughs> especially especially if we're only considering the base game no dlc because like obviously that yeah we have, that if we have to be consistent with our standards yeah no <laughs> like nothing that yeah. nothing that came after black and white is as good it's like it was really like this was like the peak of like peak pokemon, pokemon. yeah yeah peak pokemon honestly <laughs> like, like let, let's people, see. people really fucking hated it at the time like not to continue to harp on that, but, like, it was just insane, like, how, like, any, like, Pokemon-based forum, or maybe not any Pokemon-based forum, but, like, I remember, like, using the fucking Pokememes page on MemeBase back in the day, and I had to, like, stop using it, because every other post was just, like, new Anti design's bad, Anti old design's good. God. And it's, I, I have to say... I mean, closing arguments here. There, there's one reason, one one important reason why these games are so great, because they had triple battles, and Landon got to spam bulldoze on my team. It's true. true. It's true. Literally taught his whole party bulldoze and just spammed bulldoze, and I lost. It worked. Some of that yeah. really meta play. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely get more into it. Uh, Look forward to a future podcast episode. Yeah. The future we'll, podcast. We'll talk more about Gen 5 when we get to Gen 5 on its own podcast, but we'll move on because we got a lot to go through. Uh, on the 8th, there was the release of Dragon Age 2 for Windows, PCs, Xbox 360, PS3. Pass. I never really got into the Dragon Age games. Yeah, me I didn't neither. Either. No, not, not I, really my thing. Yeah, nothing that like I look at and I'm like, oh, I would never play this. This looks dumb. Like it's just like, eh, eh it's sure, sure, cool. It's I fine. guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's definitely an audience for it, but I'm just not that audience. Uh, the next week we got two releases. First was uh, I'm, I might butcher the pronunciation of this one. Okami Den for yeah, N Nintendo DS. Okami Den. I just didn't know where like the un uh, like the up no like, cloud. It's like, Okamiden. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was Okamiden or Okamiden. It, yeah, you got it. Okay, uh, that was for Nintendo DS. Uh, Jack, uh, I've played this game. I beat. I, I played this game. I'm pretty sure I bought this, if not the day it came out, like the month it came out, because I remember getting this around the same time that I got Pokemon Black and White. Because I loved Okami, and I'm like, fuck yeah, new Okami game, and it's good. It's it's a really good game. I mean, I've it's heard basically just like a bite sized version of Okami. Like you literally play as a puppy version of Amaterasu, and it's really cute. And like it, honestly. For being like 3D models on a on the Nintendo DS looks really good, actually, and the cell shading helps with that. That can be a hit or miss on the DS, so that's good. Yeah, to hear. Uh, and then the other game that came out, this one's for Al, who is currently in our chat. We got Yakuza Four for PS3. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're just we're just bringing it up because it is a prominent release. We just never played oh, it. Did I get the other thing? Continue. Continue. Uh, next, oh, okay. next up on the 22nd, we got two more games. First is, uh, Crisis 2 for Windows, PCs, Xbox 360, and PS3. Unfortunately, not what? the correct crisis. Not, that, not the uh, correct uh, crisis. Remember back in the day when, like, the bar for, like, having a PC, like, a good PC was, like, can it run crisis? Yeah. Yes. That was, like, a meme for a really long time. Yep. Um... Yeah, I haven't played this one. Uh, I, I, back in the day, uh, me, Landon, and Justin would play Crisis 3 because it was free on Plus that yep. one time. And that was pretty fun, but haven't played this one, so pass. pass. Uh, and then finally, for the 22nd at least, we had LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, which was released on all available platforms at that time. We had... PC 360, PS3, PSP, Wii, DS, and later that year we would get a version for what we're about to talk about for a brief moment. Uh, the three, three DS also got a version of this. Uh, I didn't play. Um, it. I have, I have not played this specific Lego Star Wars, but I remember when this came out and a lot of people were like really hyping it up as like the best Lego Star Wars until like 
I mean, this was before like the complete saga came out, and then like people basically started saying that was the best one. But like, I remember people really liking this. I yeah, I think I played a little bit with my brother at one point, but this was definitely like I had fallen off of that because we played a lot of like the first two on PS2. So, mm-hmm. all right, uh, yeah. the twenty seventh saw the launch of the Nintendo 3DS as well as its launch lineup of games. Uh, there was I had quite a few. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, I will, uh, I don't know. Did we want to look up that launch lineup real quick? Yeah, I'll look it up real quick. So Uh, we'll rapid fire smash your pass. I think most of it's going to be pass because it's, Uh, it's a large launch lineup, but it is the the qualities. uh, It's, it's uh, everywhere. (laughs) Um, let's see. Why is there no, like. How is there not just like a Wikipedia page for launch lineups of games of systems? Yeah, you would think, right? Um, um, Al, he probably won't mention a specific game in April. All right, I found it via there is a not much added. I found it via a pre-order checklist in a really low-res picture online, but uh, here we go. Go ahead. Uh, Nintendo Dogs and Cats. Pass. Pass. Didn't play this one. Pass. Super Street Fighter 4 3D. Smash! Uh, I did play this one, actually. This uh, was one of the two 3DS games that I got. Honestly, the of the few... Uh, I played a couple different versions of Su- of uh, Street Fighter 4. This is the one I have the most playtime in, so yeah. that means it's the best one, I'm... IMO. <laughs> don't, don't shoot me. Um, Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. Pass. We just talked about that. Uh, Splinter Cell 3D. Pass. Played it. Um, Ghost Recon Shadow Wars. Pass. 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 Uh, Rayman 3D. This is literally just a 3DS version of Rayman 2, and it's, I remember liking it. I mean, it had, it's been a very long time since I've played actual Rayman 2, so I don't have it that to compare it to, but I remember liking this version of the game. Um, we have Asphalt 3D. I don't even know what that is. It's a racing game. Ass. Yeah, Asphalt. Yeah, Asphalt. It's just a series of racing games, racing sims. Super Monkey Ball 3D. Extremely hard pass. This game is shit. (laughs) Ass. Um, Rabbids 3D. Have not touched. Ass. Pass. The Sims 3D. Pass. Pass. Uh, pass. Ridge Racer 3D. Pass. 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 Dead or Alive Dimensions. I think this one got delayed because I actually do remember playing this game, but I don't think I bought it until like two months after the 3DS came out. Um, I could be wrong though. Hold on a second. There's a lot of yeah. racing games. Yeah, it's the um. There's Pilot Wings Resort. No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, why is Pilot Wings Resort not on here? What the hell? Uh but yeah, I was right. Dead or Alive Dimensions came out on uh, I was going to say uh I have a pay- I have a an old article from Nintendo's own website where they list their launch lineup for the 3DS and you actually listed one that wasn't on theirs, but I I don't know. Mm-hmm. I got Pilot Wings Resort, uh all versions of Nintendo Dogs and Cats. There's three different ones. Super Street Fighter 4, uh, The Sims 3, uh, PES Pro Evolution Soccer 2011 3D. Oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Lego Star Wars 3, Ridge Racer 3D, Super Monkey Ball 3D, Samurai Warriors Chronicles. Pass. Sure. Uh, Asphalt 3D, Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, Tom Clancy Splinter Cell 3D, and Rayman 3D. It was, yeah. you know, the best game out of the whole list was Face Raiders. <laughs> yeah true the free software you got where cool. you took a photo of your fucking friends and then you shot them AR yeah. AR card reader though yeah so there you go I'm, I'm ready to, I'm, I'm ready to debate you I'm more of an AR card guy myself well we can talk about that in a later podcast true let's talk move on 
Uh, the big game that Landon's going to talk way too long about, I'm sure. On the 29th, The Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky, PSP. Yay! Hooray, we finally got a 2004 game that released in Japan! Yay! Yay. I mean, yeah. It came out That's... at the beginning of the PSP's life over in Japan, and it took all the way till the end of the PSP's life to come well, out. Well, it was also. like a... It was like a PC game, actually, at first. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. You mentioned yeah. that. It was there. The, it it, this game PS4 started PS4. out as a, like a PC game at the time, and then uh, they ported it to the PSP. Um, but yeah, like it took until like the ass end of the PSP's life cycle for us to start getting these games. And this is the only one we got a physical PSP release for. The second one got a digital one. And then the third one did not come out for the PSP out here. So, fuck you if you're trying to carry save data over. Yep. Um, but we did a Let's Play of this game with the PSP version uh, through PSTV. Um, and, I mean, fuck, man. These are really good games. And it's just, like, this one really really starts to build the world and you just fall in love with the characters i feel like it's got really great combat and just yeah the start of a fucking fantastic storyline all right uh we're gonna move on to april there's actually very few titles that came out in april uh first on the 11th we have limbo released on uh xbox live at first and then it would come out on PC and through PlayStation Network later that year. Smash, 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 smash. Take, take the floor. You oh. Go watch that LP. Go watch that. Go watch the Limbo Let's Play. Yeah, it is a good. Um, it's um, really fun. Like this it's game really is fun. a really good two D puzzle platformer. Really fun. Uh, really incredible atmosphere. Yep. Like short game, but doesn't matter. Like, turn the lights off and play this on a fucking spooky evening in October, and it's like prime. Or turn the lights on and play it in the middle of May or whenever. Yeah, play Which whenever. Just like the Halloween, the Halloween additive. The additional spook fest. It's spook fest fest year round. Still. All right. Uh, On the 19th, we had two games come out. I'll go over one of them real quick because I'm sure the other one, these guys will have some stuff to talk about. First one is uh, Mortal Kombat 9 for PS3 and 360. Honestly, thank you, Landon, for mentioning that it is MK9 in parentheses because I forgot that Mortal Kombat 9... (laughs) Did not actually have the title Mortal Kombat 9. I would have forgotten. I I did that because I was just like... Why, right? The Wikipedia says Mortal Kombat, and I have to remember which one this is, even though I know which one this is. I would have... <laughs> the, the Mortal Kombat games have some weird naming conventions sometimes. I mean, we literally just got a Mortal Kombat called Mortal Kombat 1. So, like... Well, we got Mortal Kombat a little like 11 before that and then it went to one yeah yeah and wasn't weird. this one didn't this one serve as like a fucking reboot to the yes whole... it was now that i remember and that's part of it but it but then they went to mortal kombat 10 with the yeah. next one. I was like, so what's like the what, fucking point exactly like what is going Get on the fuck here? out of here with that shit so yeah anything to add jack uh nah all right and then the other game that came out that day was portal 2 for PCs, Mac, PS3, and 360. Fuck yeah. I love this game. This is probably the best game to come out this year, honestly. Ow. Wow. That's wow. my opinion. I and mean, he says I've... that after we just talked about The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky featuring <laughs> Olivier. I'm not surprised that Jack That's would true. save Portal 2. I would disagree, but I think he's probably got a good case. It's my, it's my favorite game on this list. Are you sure? Did you yeah. read the whole list? Yeah. Did you read, like, Kirby's Return to Dreamland? 
and Sonic Generations. He I didn't read the list, folks. That's I've re- I've read the list. I'm it's just, aware of it's, what came out this year. To be shut the fuck up. We'll get will, <laughs> we'll, we'll get yes, we'll get. I'm going to say that we'll get Portal there. Two is better than those games. We'll we'll get okay. we'll get to it at the end. I think and I when love we can, those. I think and we I can, love those two games too. I think we could talk at the end about how everything compares because 2011 seems like a pretty stacked year when everything is accounted for. I'm uh, just trying to rile them up. Anything else to add about Portal 2, Jack, before we go move on? Um, I mean, I love this game. It has incredible dialogue, really good puzzles. I love the characters. Uh fucking just the the lore, the fucking story, the way it progresses is really fun. Um it's fixes the main problem that people had with Portal 1 is that it was too short. So here's Portal, but it's even longer. So, and it's still not super long. You could beat this in like, this is like a six hour game. That's what I think I remember you mentioning in the past. Um, let's see. Eight and a half hour story, according to how long to beat. And it's got multiplayer too. So it has like even more levels if you have a friend to play with. And those are really fun too. So, yeah. All right. Good game. Uh, Al, what game did you want us to mention in April? You can continue while we wait for that. Was there another game in April? Well, he just said, I wonder if Cloud will mention a specific game in April. And I told him, probably not. So now I'm giving him the chance to let us know what that is. I I don't know, man. What what, what game is it? Anyway, May. I forgot. Uh. Wait. What? I'm trying to think if, like, nah. Anyway, moving on to May. Uh, I'll probably say it in the chat. We got May 10th. There was the release. Oh, I I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that game. I forgot that game came out. So it didn't come out over here, is the thing. It came out in Japan. And that's the issue. I played a translation patch. We we were uh we are working off of basically st- almost strictly a U.S. release, right? For for games, so yeah. So if it didn't come out over here, it's not going to be on the list. Uh, and that's why we're including the Legend of Heroes: Trails in the Sky, because <laughs> it took till 2011, a uh, 2004 game. May 10th uh, saw the release of. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's World Championship 2011 over the Nexus for Nintendo DS. I put this on here because, fun fact, or maybe not so fun fact, this is the last Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship game. They didn't release a single Yu-Gi-Oh! game titled World Championship afterwards. This is the last one. I don't know why. Like, they have released other Yu-Gi-Oh! games that have the official rules that, uh, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy, the Duelist, and the Switch version, Link Evolution. Um, but as far as, like, following, like, the World Championship and, like, the uh, the ban list and everything and, like, having, like, a story, but, like, the World Championship subseries is done after this game. This is the last one. So I just felt like putting it on here because it is uh, worth mentioning. So uh, RIP World Championship. Yep. Uh, and then also released on the 10th was Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, the video game. Uh, this was on all platforms except for like PC. So 3DS. I think it three, came out on PC later yeah. anyway, but yeah. 3DS, PS3, Wii, DS, PSP, Xbox 360, like with all that. Yeah. We're at two Lego games for the year, folks. Two. Keep a tally. Keep it. Keep a tally. If I, if I, I was gonna say, if I had alcohol, I'd be like, take a shot whenever you hear that. Take a fucking shot. All right. Uh, moving on though, we got on the sixteenth, the game uh, Terraria. This was the original release on Windows. It would come out to other platforms later, but uh, I haven't played this one. But it is kind of a big deal. Like there is a, a cult following for this game. So Terraria. I. I have played Terraria, like, a decent amount, I think. I don't remember Same. what my playtime is on Steam. I want to say, like, probably 10 or 12 hours. But, like, 
I've never gone out of my way to play this game myself. I've never really had an interest in playing it by myself. Every time I've played it, it's been if like friends want to play it and I'll be like, yeah, sure. Uh, I was way overestimating how long I played it, though. It says I played it for uh, 3.7 hours. That sounds um, about right, actually. But it's it's fine. It's not really for me. Like, it's basically just, like, 2D side-scrolling Minecraft, which you think would be, like, more up my alley than actual Minecraft, but surprisingly, it's the opposite. Because, I don't know, the game just feels really, like, clunky to play, honestly. And... I don't know. I've just never really been a fan of the way it, like, controlled or, like, just the interface in general. From what I've been told uh, by a friend who plays way too much Terraria, it has definitely improved over the years since original release. Um, I, but I also so. haven't played it since, like, 2011 myself. Uh, same with Minecraft. So, <laughs> eh. God, yeah. if you tried to play Minecraft now, you'd be like, what the hell is all this? It's so yeah, different. I think, I think the last time I played Minecraft was uh, in college. Someone would make like levels in Minecraft, and I would make levels in uh, a fan rom of Super Mario Brothers with Portal Gun, uh, mm. and we like trade off and do like see if the other one could beat that thing. So it was probably like 2012, 2013 was like the last time I played Minecraft. But yeah, no Terraria. It's okay. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to the last game of this month, released the next day on PS3 and 360, L.A. Noir. Doubt. Doubt. I doubt that. Press X doubt to that. doubt. Press X to doubt. Uh, I've never played this game, but I watched a full Let's Play of it back in the day, uh, so I know the story at least. Um, it's fine. It's fine. There you go. Moon on a <laughs> June. First, That's it. first game. I have, no, I have no real interest in playing it myself, honestly. Uh, released on PS3 on the 7th of June. It was Infamous 2. Landon, you've played this one, right? Nope. Oh, wait, I played which one have you Second played? Son for the Second PS4. Son. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I, do wanna, I do want to purchase this video game. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. All right. I've, I've not played this one. Yeah. Uh, on the 14th, we got two games. The first one, released for PC, PS3, and Xbox 360, after being in development hell for a really long time, Duke Nukem Forever yeah. finally, finally comes out. Steve. You can't sucks. You can't have a good year in gaming without a fucking garbage ass dumpster fire game to go with it. I have played this game. Oh god. I'm sorry. Please tell me about your experience. It's really bad. It's it's really bad. Um it's been a long time since I played it, but I remember playing like the first 2 or 3 hours of this game. Um yeah, it's it controls like shit. It's really clunky. It's super glitchy. It's everything that you've heard about it. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then the other game that came out on the same platforms, uh, Alice Madness Returns, which is a new Alice in Wonderland game. So, uh, okay, I guess. I don't know. I didn't play it. I don't know. This one was definitely a cult classic. I have heard, people... I've had, I have heard some decent things. I, I remember yeah, this one was a lot of people like... turned around on this one and was like, actually, that's a fun game. And now it's like, uh, $85. Really? Yeah, it's a it's a spin. I'll, I'll okay. pull open a the eBay while you talk about um, next game, the next hot garbage. <laughs> Landon says it's hot garbage because on the 3ds on the 19th we got the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time 3D. Smash! This is the most this is the most playable version of Ocarina of Time. This is the best version of Ocarina of Time. That is true. Okay, I. Slightly overestimated Alice of Madness Returns. Um, complete in box version for PS3 goes for about sixty dollars, but 60. still expensive. Yeah, it's it's full it's retail about, price for a complete in box. What you would have paid for it back in the day? 
Yeah, well, ten dollars more ish. Yeah, I was gonna say these came out at like fifty. I do remember a lot of PS3 and 360 games were still coming in at fifty. So yeah, what at what point did that change like completely? Um, I mean, it was definitely changed by the release of the PS4 and Xbox One, but there was a couple oh, yeah, like late. Sure. There was a couple games here and there that were. Uh, bu- kind of like how they do like seventy dollars games sparingly at first, uh, until we just kind of went full, you know, blown, you know, seventy dollars retail, full retail for anything not Nintendo. Uh, there was a period where there was like a couple games here and there were sixty dollars at the end of that generation, but it wasn't. I'm common. seeing, I'm seeing like two thousand six. Oh, there was for sixty. Started coming out for sixty dollars. Okay, so it was. So it was a lot. Necessarily have been every game was sixty dollars. It was definitely like the triple A title. It was. It was sparingly, but yeah, it was a lot. It was. It was the whole generation. I forgot. Yeah, I'm going to assume this was based off of no basis in fact that Alice Madness Returns fifty dollar game. I'm just going to. I fully believe that it was a fifty dollar game when it launched. Even if I have. No basis of fact. Exist. Uh, to yeah. uh, continue going back to uh, Ocarina of Time 3D, we did talk about this game uh, in our part one of the Legend of Zelda series retrospective uh, because it's tied to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and that was part of the first half. So, I mean, we've probably said enough about that game uh, in that podcast. Is there anything we'd like to add real quick before we move on? God, I wish I could have played this version for the channel. Oh, yeah. Fuck, why did I have to play the 64 version? I would say this is probably like the first noteworthy game for the 3DS, in my opinion, at least. So After Face Raiders and AR card games. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That's, that's so sad that you have to go months without yeah. like Four months anything. before like, yeah. Because, I mean, oh, all right. Uh, there really wasn't... Rough, rough times. Yeah. I mean, uh, anything I know Nintendogs and Cats was, like, technically a first-party title, but, like, this is the first first-party Nintendo 3DS game. That I mean, that Pilot really... Wings was also yeah. a first-party like, party title. Well, okay. Yeah. So, this was, like, the first, like, killer app for the system. Yes. It's, it still took four months to get a killer app for your system. When... Now, let's be real. There's systems that have gone a longer, a much longer time without a killer app. Oh, yes. Yeah, but PS3 yeah, still doesn't have one. <laughs> um, Buzzing. No, they have no. the, they have the Legend Clank. of Heroes uh, Trails into Reverie PS5 version. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. No. They have something. Yeah. But is that an exclusive? <laughs> I mean, you, I know you said PS5 version, but are there other versions of the game? Yeah, Switch and PS4. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but the models look slightly nicer, so... Oh, uh, mm. well... O- Olivier's in that version. Uh, damn, you uh, know what? He's also in the other versions, but don't tell him that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on. Uh, the last game of the month on the 28th was Dynasty this one's Warriors for Gundam 3 for PS3 and 360. So you got a Gundam game for you. with Dynasty Warriors. I mean, Dynasty Warriors games are pretty fun, even if they're not always good. And having Gundam, that's pretty cool. I haven't played any of these, though. Did not include the other Dynasty Warriors game that came out. I'm pretty sure 7 also came out this year, but I included this one for now. Dynasty Warriors 7 did come out this year. I forget when it came out, but honestly, 7's not even one of the ones that people really talk about, so it's no big deal. But I did this for Al. There you go, Al. All right, we got... July, there was a couple games, not a whole lot. Um, first released on the 5th, and I put this in, uh, I'll mention why. For PS3, you had PlayStation Move Ape Escape, which, as the I'm name is implies, as the name implies, requires PlayStation Move. Uh, it is a basic rail shooter with Ape Escape. I mention this because this is the last Ape Escape game that ever came out. The last new Ape Escape release is this piece of shit. Good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Sony hates Ape Escape and Ape Escape fans. Sony hates 
Probably all of their fans of like fucking good games. They hate they hate their fans of anything that's not the Naughty Dog games at this point. Well, yeah. pretty much. Uh, moving on though, uh, we also had the release on the twentieth of Bastion, originally on Xbox Live Arcade, but would come out on Windows and PSN later that year. Bastion, smash, 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 smash. Good game, good game, good, good game. Good fucking shit. Urgh. I would not I would not play this until uh next year though. I mean same with Limbo actually. We got that this and that in the fucking humble indie bundle. Yeah, that's, that's when I played mine for both the of them. The classic the classic package. Um so good. But yeah, um got some big indie uh, releases this year. Limbo, you got the Bastion like This was a fucking this was another killer year for just like like what would become big name like indie titles. Um yeah. Bastion uh was fucking one of the first ones from uh Super Giant Games. Yeah, um, I got it right. Um, I had to think about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, Super Giant Games, who would later on do Transistor, Pyre, Hades, um, Bastion was their first one. Fucking great, like what, uh, like two D, three D. It's like isometric. isometric. It's like isometric, isometric, like action puzzle combat. Beat them up, fucking cock out. Uh, Oh, that's the next game. Oh, um, yeah, beat 'em up game, like just action, action, smash 'em game. Uh, that yeah. was fucking great. Good mm-hmm. story, great voice work. Yeah, the narrator in this game, fucking Ooh. great, fucking great. Good game, so good. good game. All right, and still then, waiting uh, for a physical Switch release. Come on, make it happen. Please, released please. on July twenty sixth for PS three and three sixty was Catherine. I have not played this game, but I've heard some pretty cool things. I also have not played this game, but I'm I, very familiar with it, and I I know like the whole story. I've seen a let's play of this game as well. I've probably purchased this game like two or three times at this point. <laughs> That's probably an overstatement. I definitely purchased it once, at the very least. Um, but I've yet to ever play it, and who knows? Um. Oh well. So we're going to go through one more month, and then after that, we're going to take a quick break because obviously oh the holiday season is very bad, is very, like, game releases are always very holiday heavy, so we're going to be doing a lot more from September onward. Uh, but let's just go through August real quick. The first big release uh, was one I put here on the 4th, released on iOS, uh, is Temple Run, which, ha- say whatever you will about Temple Run. It spawned a whole wave of games on mobile devices. So credit words due. Temple Run, everybody. 2011. I honestly had no idea why you included this, I, and I still don't. And it, like I said, we may not, we may not play these kind of games, but it is a very big release for mobile gaming. So Temple Run. I, I, I will say, when this game came out, because I was still in high school at the time huge like everyone was fucking playing this game back then like people that don't play video games were like obsessed with temple run and i'm like i played it a a couple times because i did not have a smartphone or an ipod touch so it is like one of the biggest like grandfathers of of like mobile phone games i i had like a like a flip phone still at the time so like I had a I had a slide phone whatever. when this came out. Yeah, so like I this had, this is like I had I literally a, never heard of this game until you included it on the list. I had like a little very bl- are you serious. I had a little yes. BlackBerry. That's crazy. I had a little BlackBerry ripoff style phone from Huawei. That was my first phone. So like it it's funny because <laughs> you you just completely I don't, avoided this game and like yeah, I, I couldn't avoid I I couldn't it escape it. Oh like, yeah, it was I ever, don't like, think I never played. I it. ever heard of this game before this, so that's why I was very confused. I but ne- I was so like, he's I, technically in charge. I'll let him. I do never played he wants. it, but I. So this was 2011. Was the first year that I really had like a full time job, and like 
a lot of my coworkers who were more financially well off, either because of their family or whatever, they had like, you know, they had the devices that could play this and they were all about this game. I was like, I don't know what this game is, but like, it was definitely like the first sign that I was like, oh, games on your phone is going to be a thing in the, in the coming years. Okay. Like, so I did want to mention it just because, uh, next game that came, uh, actually before we get to another game on the 12th, on the, on, but yeah. Before we get to the other two games, uh, on the 12th, we had the 3DS getting a huge price cut. This is a big deal. We'll talk about it more on the podcast, but we do want to mention uh, it's a really big event. It was slashed from 250 uh, US dollars to 170, and they had an ambassador program that went with it. So, I mean, it's... It it was it was pretty huge. I like I said, we'll talk more about this when we talk about the three DS. I'm sure. So, uh, on the 16th, we had the release of No More Heroes: Heroes Paradise for PS3. That is a PS3 port of the original No More Heroes on the Wii. Uh, I I don't know. I I've I don't remember what I was hearing about it as like a ver- I've, a port. I've played this one. Is it good? Yeah. Is it? It does. It just oh. not feel quite the same because you don't have like yeah. the controls. Yeah, it hundred percent. It just, it it just doesn't feel quite right. Like it plays perfectly fine, but it it's the game doesn't hit the... because you gotta have the air jacking off with the Wii remote exactly to, to charge the battery on your lightsaber. Exactly. Exactly. If I can't masturbate during the middle of a game, is it really worth my time? Exactly. There you go. That's why. Plus, you can't play No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise with your arms crossed. So, no. there you go. Exactly. Bad, bad game design. Bad game design. Uh, and then on the 23rd, we had Deus Ex Human Revolution for Windows, PS3, and 360. Uh it was kind of a big game, but I, I didn't play it, so I don't know. I, I remember this being a really big game, actually. Yeah. Like, a lot of people really liked this game, and but I've, I've not played it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave Landon now. is going to get okay. up. Uh, so, I'm going to get up, too. As usual, um, I'm going to have to try and see if I can remember what these guys are doing uh, on their... Uh, things but anyway um thank you everybody who's tuned in so far as always we want to give a shout out to everybody who supports our channel over on patreon specifically at the six dollar gold stooge tier as always we've got pixel vixen um yeah r.i.p 10 desires i didn't mention it because again not actually released in the u.s it was not brought to steam until later so i i didn't have it Um, but yeah, thank you for everybody who's tuned in. Uh, we've been doing polls on Patreon. Uh, we actually had the poll that decided this was going to be the topic of what we'd be talking about. Um, wait, no, that was visual presentation and games, uh, was a previous topic that we are talking about. Um, so we are going to have another poll in the near future to discuss what we're going to talk about after the next episode, I'm sure. Um, we have uh, twitch.tv slash gaming stooges, which is what we're doing with our live stream for this episode right here. Uh, and for that, we've been doing Lexine's Quest some more, of course. We've got Uncharted 4 now. Uh, we've got um, Landon has been. What have you been doing currently? You've been kind of bouncing around on the on Twitch. So I finished uh, the Oregon Trail. Um, and we are returning back to uh, hopefully finish up uh, Dragon Warrior Monsters uh, next week. I had to do some off-screen grinding, which is why we moved into uh, the Oregon Trail as a, like a stopgap for two and a half weeks. But now we are back. Played more of that as well last stream. And then I don't know what's going to happen after that because... Uh, there's probably about a stream left. All right. So we'll see. Uh, so, yeah, I mentioned um, we started uh, Uncharted 4. How's yep. Uncharted 4 going, Jack? Awful. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. I hate this game. 
Um, I got lost a couple of times in the last stream, but otherwise it's been going pretty good. And I'm enjoying myself. I've been playing Lexine's Quest. We're, we're getting pretty far in. Uh, Landon's been fixing up the game as we go along in order to uh, keep me sucked in and playing his game for the rest of time. I think this is an evil plot that he's concocted, and I just am realizing it now. So that's cool. Uh, one day, maybe, I will defeat Lexine's Quest, a certain generic RPG. Um, so Jack and Landon are showing off. They've got a Tillamook merchandise Jack. well i have merchandise landon has ice cream i have mountain huckleberry ice cream nice mountain huckleberry that sounds interesting all right yeah. so uh, um we're gonna move on to september the last four months have a lot to talk about and we are already an hour in so let's head on in. through uh we got three games that came out on september 6th the first one Dead Island for Windows, PS3, and 360. Next was I know this game was really big at the time, but yeah, pass. Uh, we got Resistance Three for PS3. Pass. Pass. And then Disgaea Four: A Promise Unforgotten as well for PS3. Pass. I I haven't played Disgaea Four. Like all the Disgaea games, they seem like it'd be a fun time, but like. I played the first one. I played the second one. If you've played a Disgaea game, you know how literally all of them are going to play. It's going to be the same thing every single time, the same exact feeling, pacing, everything. So, like, it's one of those things where, like, either you're on board to just grind through every entry in the series, or you are just not. So. Uh, and then we have, on the 9th, we've got Star Fox 64 3D for 3DS. This game is really important for one major reason, and I want to talk about it real quick. Yep. Um, this game, what? Because the, the back in before this game, Nintendo always used to release their game on Sundays because you know they don't want kids to skip school to buy their games on launch day. Oh, um, this game was originally going to come out on nine eleven, the tenth anniversary of 9-11 and nintendo realizing this almost way too late decided to move up the release date two days and ever since this game they have been releasing new games on fridays instead of sundays it's like they have they... now moved to thursday actually <laughs> it's like but they... that's very recent it's like they changed the release to fridays Literally. and then committed to the bit just to get away from the I'm, possibility. I'm just, and that's I'm it's, so serious. It's it's so bad that the game that was gonna release was fucking Star Fox sixty four, where you fly a plane. Yep. Into buildings too. Definitely oh, into no. buildings for sure. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can't help but run into buildings in this game. Whew. Um I will say I think um an a game later this month is an exception to that, but I know another game later on is um Yeah. Huh. All right. Oh, so moving on, we got on the 13th there was the release of Bit Trip Saga for 3DS. That Ooh, is a smash. that is a 3DS collection of all of the Bit Trip games that were released on WiiWare. Does not come with the bonus content from Complete that was released on Wii. That was released after or before this version. I don't remember. You would ask me a question. I I don't remember, but I it, it, okay. basically the Wii game is Bit Trip Complete. If you wanted the whole package, if you want it on 3DS. Uh, it doesn't have all the extra content that they added in specifically for complete, but you do get all six of the games. I do really like this game, though, because I think the Bit Trip games, because of their simplicity, look really good with the 3D effect on. Like, According to the internet, Bit Trip Complete came out the same day, so... And it wasn't listed on Wikipedia. Yeah, Okay, well, then we're just going to go with that. Uh, Bit Trip Complete and Bit Trip Saga both came out then. It's a good thing I just brought up Bit Trip Complete then. Uh, yeah, but Bit Trip, like, both, either version, solid, solid fucking way to go. You can either have, like, the completely mobile in, and having 3D effect with Bit, Bit Trip Saga, or you can have the bonus uh, 20, like, levels for every single game with uh, Complete. And either way... You're, you're running away with some good shit. 
Good value. I will say yeah. I do think that Bitrip Saga is incredibly solid. It is definitely one of the best 3DS games from this year. No question. I uh, completely unre unrelated, and by that I mean it's related. I have a signed copy of Bitrip Complete for nice. the Wii. Oh, that's right. I think yeah. I, rem yeah, I think you remember showing oh, yeah. uh, showing that off. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, Jack, do you have anything to add about Bitrip Saga, Bitrip Complete? Uh, never played these packages actually, so Ooh, I you do are not. you are missing out. Awful. It's they're so I'm good. Sorry. How dare you Espe claim especially, Portal 2 is the best game released this year? Especially if you haven't played, like, Bit Trip with the 3D effect on. Dude, it's an experience. It really is. <laughs> like, I'm with, I'm, I'm, I'm with Landon on this one, dude. Like, you gotta, you gotta play at least, like, at least Fuck. get a copy of Saga. Fuck Portal 2. At least get a copy of Saga, turn the 3D up, and just fucking play it. It is so, it is, it is really cool. All, All right. my homies love Bit Trip over Portal Two. <laughs> uh, anyway, released on the nineteenth. Show me, show me where I can find a copy. All right, I'll, I'll play it. Uh, I'll, I'll, so I'll do it. On the nineteenth, we have two games released, and not just two games. Two games for the same system. Uh, for the no Nintendo, way. for the Nintendo DS, first was Dragon Quest Monsters Joker Two. So another game in the Dragon nice. Quest Monsters series. Have not played. And Kirby Mass Attack. Angry. I mean, I want to talk about it, so I can't pass, but it's an angry smash. Yeah, it's like... Hateful smash. Hateful smash. Like, it's not a bad game, but among... It's one, Kirby... of, my least... It's one of my least favorite Kirby uh, games. Among Kirby games, it is the least favorite uh, that I've played. I know a lot of people aren't big on, like, Amazing Mirror... I like Amazing Mirror. I don't care for this game. I I would rather play Amazing Mirror over this. It's so hard to control all those Kirby's, and it actually is physically exhausting. It's damn new and factory sealed for eighteen bucks for Kirby. You'd be a oh, fool not trip. to buy that, Jack. Yeah, I'm going to buy that as soon as we're done with this podcast. Wow. I, um, I showed him where he could buy it, folks. All right. You know what? Uh, you Factory know what? sealed. Yeah. Factory sealed. Can't $18. Go wrong. Can't go wrong um, with that. Uh, I will. One thing I was going to say, this game came out on a Monday for some reason. Um, so not every game following Star Fox 64 3D uh, followed the Friday rule. But I know, spoiler alert, Skyward Sword was released on a Friday. I remember because it was the Friday after uh, Thanksgiving. It was Black Friday, wasn't it? Uh, or was it so the week before? I don't it was remember. before. Was it okay? It was Leave. the twentieth, so it was about before. Okay, that right. was off a little bit. Uh, so yeah. Uh, on the twentieth. Speaking of which, we have two more games the very next day. Uh, there was Gears of War three for three hundred and sixty. Sure. Cool. I, I, I mean, yeah, I never played it. And, it released. It uh, released. Released digitally was uh, Res Boo. Resident Evil 4 HD on Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. Boo. You hated that? I, I hated it because it's digital only. Oh, okay. Um, I've not played this particular version of Resident Evil 4. So I have no I have no clue. Uh, Get out of here. On the twenty seventh, released on PS3. Interestingly enough, they were still doing these kind of games very late in the PS3's life. But Ico and Shadow of the Colossus Collection. Smash! 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 smash. This smash. is a smash. really good pairing of games. I will admit. Oh yeah. I think so. Since we're on the topic, I believe one of the God of War collections came out in two thousand eleven as well. Yeah, um, but Ico and Shadow of the Colossus is the one I cared about more, so I included it, and I was like, I don't care about God of War. I'm gonna kick it, so I did. Um, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, two fantastic PS2 games, um, and just brought over to the PS3. You can play them; they're smelly. Suck on that, suck on that. Uh, it was the God of War Origins Collection, which is the uh, the two PSP games in one yeah. package on the uh, PS3. 
that's not even the two that people that. should that that well the thing is okay god of war one and two came out on in a package on the ps3 in 2009 oh that's so true, that's they true had, yeah so they so they had done that already that's true that's fair. um and then they also this is i mean they also released the God of War Saga, which includes all five games in one package the next year. Oh, that's so. good. That's good, Dan. But uh, the two PSP games were digital only, like on a voucher. Uh, for that. So it's yeah. only one and two on a disc, three on another disc. Um, and then Ascension why was people, never why people released in any of these collections. Why would they not, why would they not just make it one three-disc package? Excellent question, Sony. Because of Colin. Because they didn't want to pay money for the extra discs, even though it's like ten oh, cents for Sony. a uh, even like a, well, Blu-ray, I guess maybe like fifty cents, but still, like it's it's like pennies for a disc, and they were just like, nah, no. Anyway, a, a voucher is all they get. Yep. So uh, at the what? end of the month, on the twenty eighth. We got a uh, Binding of Isaac released on Windows, PCs, 360, and PS3. There are some people that really get into this game. I had a friend that was like I'm super not in this one, game. I am not one of those people, but like there are some people that have played like thousands of hours in this game. I played it a bit and I enjoyed it. It was definitely like at the like the very beginning of like. I would say, like, the roguelike craze that has continued on today. Oh, yeah. You have some, like, examples of roguelikes prior to this, but this was definitely, like, this and Rogue Legacy were, like, definitely, like, two games that, like, really teed off what I feel like has become, like, the roguelike genre. Damn, I thought I owned The Binding of Isaac on Steam. Apparently, I don't. Damn. I definitely, I've definitely played it. I mean, uh, you know, I've have experience with this game it's not like it's it's fun and i can definitely see the appeal like i could see myself getting into it but it's just didn't really click with me when i did play it um but yeah i think like my friend nate has like over a thousand hours in this game it's kind of ridiculous gross all right uh and then moving on to october on released on the 4th on PS3 and 360, the meme, the legend, possibly IGN's favorite game of all time, Dark Souls. Hard pass. Not the hardest pass for this year, but hard pass. Pass, I've... I'm interested in playing it, but like, I, it's low I on need my to radar. Sit down and give, I need to sit down and give Dark, Sh- Dark Souls a more fair shot, honestly. Because like, I haven't played too much of them i've played like bits and pieces of them here and there and i've played like a few hours of bloodborne but i didn't really get into it um i mean i i definitely see the appeal it's, but it's just so dark not souls I've been able to get into yet dark souls feels like the kind of game series not just this game but game series to me where like it's the opposite of that viral tweet problem where it's like this game's good if you don't have a bitch in your ear telling you it sucks. Instead, it's more like, this game's probably good if you don't have everybody shoving it down your throat that it's good. Like, if you could just play it and not have anybody, like, running to talk about it, it's probably pretty good. But I just haven't gotten around to it because fucking overhyped. So, but I'm sure it's good. It's very overhyped. Uh... A week later, on the 11th for 360, we got Forza Motorsport 4. Yeah. Cars. 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 Uh, On the 16th, released on most platforms, uh, at this point, probably the actual active platforms, because this is when we're starting to see the winding down of previous generation handhelds, you got... Uh, Skylanders, Spyro's Adventure for Windows, PCs, 3DS, uh, PS3, Wii, and 360. Oh boy, Skylanders! This is when they decided... Death of an icon. This is, yep. this, this is when they decided to ta- take my boy Spyro out back and fucking mutilate him. He's they not even. He's they, not. They he's, mutilated him. He's not even. He's not even a prominent character in this game. He's just there they for the name. They skinned him and presented his skin 
puppet <laughs> to the world. Skin puppet. Yeah. That's what I said. Uh, <laughs> good good description. Yeah. Uh, that was released on I the mean, 16th, in case I didn't mention eh. it. Uh, 18th, we got two games, three games, actually. Three games. Uh, first, we got Batman Arkham City for PS3 and 360. Batman Arkham City. Jack, you want to tell us about Batman Arkham City? Yeah. <laughs> he I hates like, it. I like this game. This Is it your fun. favorite game that got released this year? No. Huh? To huh? answer Al's question, Could yes, I? that version of Spyro in Skylanders huh? looked really weird. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Jack, Batman Arkham City. Um, it's not your favorite game from this year because Portal 2 is. It's not. Yeah, no, it's it, it's not. Like I said. <laughs> this is a packed um, year for you, though. Oh, yeah. No, I, there's a ton of great games that came out this year. Um, like the year of Jack. Man. Uh... I forgot what game we were talking about for a second. Batman Batman Arkham City. Arkham City. (laughs) I mean, I, okay. I really, I really liked Arkham Asylum, but like story wise, gameplay progression, pretty linear. Arkham City, open world game. You get to fly around Arkham as Batman. It's fun. You get to fly above a group of mooks and you hear one of them go, it's the bat. And then they try and, they try and get you. But I mean, there's just like, a ton to do in this game. Honestly, too much to do in this game. There's too many Riddler trophies. I'd never bothered to collect all of those. Um, but there's just like a lot of like nooks and crannies to explore. This game is like really well designed. It has like good boss fights. Uh, it has a really great story. Um, the characters they use in this game are like really well represent. Or, I mean, not well represented, but like portrayed well. At, portrayed well, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I love this game. You want to also tell us about the next game that also came out on the same day for PS3, Ratchet and Clank All for One? I can. I don't have much to say about it because, to be quite honest, I never got very far in this game. Uh, not that I hated it by any means, just by Ratchet standards, it wasn't anything too special, and I only got, like, probably four hours in before stopping. Um, it's definitely a game that's like built around the multiplayer and considering I was playing it myself, it just felt kind of hollow. Yeah. I was never interested Um, in this game, like on the games that I'm like collecting for the series. Like this is off my radar. I, do you want my copy? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Um, but no, it's, it's not a bad game by any means. There's just like way better ratchet games. There's better ratchet games on this system. Like at least two of them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Um, and then also released on this day for PS3 and 360. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what this game is, but Landon put it here. So I assume he has something to say about oh, you Rocksmith. What... I'm surprised you don't know what Rocksmith is. Um, it, okay. So game Rocksmith is like, R- Rocksmith is a game where you have an actual guitar and it's like Guitar Hero where it has like the note highway, but you see like the strings and frets and like it tells you like what chords to play oh i think i vaguely remember seeing something about it but it definitely like it i i've never played it but from what people have said it is actually a pretty good like guitar teacher okay so like if you want to learn how to play guitar play rocksmith okay um i don't know for sure if it works with every guitar i mean i know there's I, I have no clue what the actual kind of hookup is from, like, the guitar that comes with it. Um, but I, from what I understand, it works with supposedly any guitar. But More importantly, no the next game that came out for the Wii on October 24th, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Kirby's Return to Dreamland, baby! Smash! Smash. I still need to play Go this watch. game. Oh, watch that LP. That Do LP it. is that is like probably our single most popular let's play on YouTube. Uh, like, it's kind of sad. The the views on it are pretty crazy. I have no idea why, but it turns out wanted... when you get both of you guys in an actual room together, people yeah, love you. Apparently, 
that's the secret to our success is that we need to do more let's plays in person well oh well when do we get the gaming stooges studio so we can go back to let's plays one day Maybe someday but i'll tell you right now we're not moving to la for that oh my god is shit expensive there Fuck. Well, that's for when we're like millionaires and we make yeah. it really big. And then we still don't move to L.A. because gross. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. What's worse? Um, What's worse? Moving to L.A. or moving to anywhere in Ohio? I would rather live in Ohio than L.A. Okay. It would be more affordable go. and it's closer to home and my friends. <laughs> so, True. yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Uh and then the last game that came out in October on the 25th, the day after Kirby, Battlefield 3 for PC, 360, and PS3. Sure. This game, if you want. This game was literally like a dollar by the time I started working at GameStop. Like, that's funny. Less than three years, years later. Yeah. But this game, this game is like in every like used game stores like bargain bin like everyone has like a million copies of this game it's sad all right we're gonna move on to to november november is a packed month so we'll start off we're gonna have to cut some things for time so so skip the first and three things (laughs) now skip the first three games just mention four or five you can skip six (laughs) seven you can keep eight skip the rest all right anyway (laughs) uh we're gonna start with the game's release on the first you've got uh i'll get the first one out of the way because it's probably or the second one out of the way first rather uh goldeneye 007 reloaded for ps3 360 i've never played this one but i've heard it's bad i don't know i i played the the goldeneye 007 game that was out on the wii but not this one. So, Yeah, I heard that one was pretty good, but I've heard this one was bad. I'm glad I didn't play it's that one then. Definitely yeah. not a spoonful of Tillamook's Mountain Huckleberry ice cream. Uh, let's talk about Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception for PS3. Gross. Yeah, hey, I'll feed that game. Gross. You want to talk um, about Uncharted 3 Drake's this- Deception real quick? This was one of the four PS3 games that I first got uh, when I got my PS3, including the bundle that came with the system, the two games that we already mentioned. And we're going to get to the other game right after this. Um, <clears throat> Uncharted 3 is a solid game. I mean, go watch that LP. Um, it's not my favorite game in the franchise, but like for it being the third best in a game with four main line out of the mainline games because i haven't fully played um lost legacy lost legacy yeah and i haven't really touched golden abyss um but out of the four main games it's number three on this from best to worst or best to least best because honestly they're all good games but i i I fucking love this game i mean i remember really like Play, like I beat this game in I think two days when I first got it. Like I was pretty addicted to it. All right, uh, it's fine. It's whatever. It's kind of <laughs> kind of smells. Kind of smell smells like sand. Smells and plain. Do you know fuel. how like smell the smell of sand cloud? Yeah. Do you know what that smells like? A little bit, yeah. Okay, it's, that's what this game smells like. I mean, that's not unpleasant, yeah. but it's also very plain. Like. Yeah, it's like when you get sand caught up your nostril. You know what that smells like? Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Moving the goalpost on me here. <laughs> At first, we just went to sand, and then it's sand in your nostril. Do you know what sand in your butt crack smells like? No! Yes, actually. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, uh, the last game that came out on uh, November 1st, released on PS3 and 360 originally, and then being released on uh, PC, as well as there was a 3DS version. It's not the exact same game, to be fair. But uh, we got Sonic Generations. That's us. Yeah. That's a big old yeah. smash. The, the day that this game came out this is to the g- 
to Christmas of that year was the longest 55 days of my life, I think. This is the it's game like, that sold me the PS3. This is the killer app for yeah. me for the PS3. Yeah. I did not have yeah. a new console, a new generation console technically. I mean, I had a Wii, but I didn't have an HD like, you know, PS3 or 360 till this game was coming out. Like yeah. I was really fucking excited for this game. Oh, yeah, and I did not have the money for a PS3. So I just got it for Christmas that year and I got it with this and Uncharted 4. Or Uncharted 3, excuse me. Jesus. Not Uncharted 4. Um, as and of, I played the shit out of this game, too. I beat this in a day. As of the making of this podcast episode, Sonic Cross Shadow Generations has not released yet. Uh, but I, I'm so excited for it. I'm looking forward I to it. I am, too, honestly. He's not. He's not. Oh, okay. I mean, I love the shit out of Sonic Generations, so I'm sure Sonic Cross Shadow Generations, unless they royally fuck up the physics, it's probably going to be really good. I hope they fuck up the physics. It would The game would play better. It's Sonic Team, which means I can't get excited until I actually play it. Isn't because, that fun? Because I don't know if it's going to be good or not. You just, you never know with them. It's like... They can make something okay. They can make something good. They can make um, hot garbage. Sonic Six. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, you never know. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, I really liked it. I, uh, I think it's yeah. This this game rules. I mean, I this was the first platinum trophy I ever got. I'm so close to platinum them in this game. I have like 81 percent trophies. I will never get the platinum on this because I refuse to do the final boss no hit without getting trophy. hit. I think that was yeah. the last one I got. I think that's going to be was, the one that keeps me from ever doing it. That was yeah. definitely the last one I got. I remember getting it when I'm just like, it was like five thirty in the morning when I was doing it, and I started like earlier than that. It's fucking stupid. It looks like yeah. a homing shot. Be careful, Sonic. Thank you. You're welcome. Watch out, Sonic. You've got Thank this, you. Sonic. That's what he says. But yeah, it's it's just other other than the final boss, this game is great. Um, this was also Al's first platinum. Fuck yeah. There you go. Sonic Generations for the win. Uh it is a, like outside of that trophy, it is actually a very easy platinum. Like there's yes. not a lot of difficult trophies yeah. in that game. That's literally the only one. Uh released on Many platforms, weirdly, uh, we got PC, PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, and DS. Not, the DS not, version not, was, not, it was technically a different version yeah, of the game. But of course, yes, yeah, it ju- came ju- out on ju- ju- just, yeah. just like Sonic Generations, obviously. I mean, I don't even think the Wii game is probably fully the same game. But uh, no. we got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Boo. Pass. And also, I remember when, um, so when I was in high school, like everybody was, obs- like everybody, it felt like, except me, was obsessed with Call of Duty. And like, I didn't yeah. give a shit about Call of Duty at the time. Like, I would play like multiplayer with friends, but like, I didn't really like obsess over it like everyone did. This was the first Call of Duty game that I heard a lot of people like shit talking. Like a lot of hardcore fans were like not happy with this game. I like, mean, a lot because of the ending. No, I don't know if from the ending. But, from like, what I a heard, lot of people really do not like. I was it. gonna say, from what I heard, a lot of people were upset at the like the things that did not carry over from Modern Warfare Two. Because like a lot of people yeah. loved Modern Warfare Two. But, like, I think I heard oh, stuff yeah. about, like, the maps weren't as good, the weapons weren't as good, just, like, everything was just not as good as Modern Warfare 2. Now, I don't have a stake in this, this is just what I remember hearing people say about Modern Warfare 3. A lot of people say this is, like, the first bad Call of Duty game, or, like, the first, like, less than good Call of Duty game, at least. And it was, like, kind of the beginning of the end for at least the Infinity Ward games. Because I know, like, Black Ops 2 came out after this, and a lot of people do love Black Ops 2 as well. Um, Like, there were decent Call of Duty games that came out after this one. But, like, this was kind of, like, the start of, hey, maybe we shouldn't release a game every single year. But they do it anyway. 
continued to do it anyway. Yep. yep. Fifth, like we're we're like going on like two and, decades of Call of Duty. And part of the reason why a lot of people weren't playing this game is because of the next game on our list. Yeah. So uh three days later. Oh my god. The it's most Skyrim. the most ported game of like all time. We got besides be, be, somewhere, be, folks. Besides Doom, I mean, besides Doom, uh, you got what on Windows, PS3, and 360. The Elder Scrolls Five, Skyrim. I think I Resident Evil Four also has a. That's like, probably yeah. That's that's fair. Yeah, but it's, it's one. Another, it's it's one of the most ported games of all time. It is. Yeah. Uh, anyway, fuck this game. All my homies hate the Elder Scrolls Five. Yeah. Skyrim. I remember, I like, not care less about this game. Everyone was fucking obsessed with this game when this came out. Like, I obviously I didn't have a console at the time, and also I didn't give a shit, so I didn't play it at the time. I didn't end up playing this game until it came out, or until I um until I got it on Steam uh, a couple of years later, and I've played it for a total of probably here. Let's find out. Let's see what Steam says. Um, I'm still waiting for them to patch the game to make it playable. True. Uh, I have played it for 3.6 hours. Wow. That's, that's a long not, time. That's also not including, like, I have done, like, playthroughs of this game, like, with, like, in the presence. Well, I shouldn't say I have, but I've been in the presence of friends who have done playthroughs of this game. Like, I would watch my friends play it sometimes, and it was like, you know, we would just, like, do goofy shit and it wasn't like it was entertaining but like is it something i go out of my way to play ever no not really all right but, uh yeah. also released on this day on the 11th for literally all platforms i assume that there's different versions between these that are not the same game uh you have lego harry potter years five through seven and just so you guys, shot. just so you're aware shot, shot, it's shot. On Windows, it's on 360, PS3, PSP, P- Wii, DS, 3DS, and iOS. That is eight platforms. It's on the everything. Re- it's the on real best ev- game to come out on this day. Uh, I mean, I'd rather play this than, than Skyrim. I would, honestly, <laughs> to, let's, I would let's, ironically let's rather play real. Lego Harry Potter years five through seven. Than the Elder Scrolls Five, yeah, and I don't um, give a shit about the source material. <laughs> uh, on the thirteenth, we've got Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS. Yeah, Smash. Smash. Yeah. All right. finally a what fucking a, good game. What a good we we had we had to wait so long for one good game to talk know, about right? for this year. So Jesus I, Christ, my thoughts on this game are going to be real quick, real simple. So if I can just, uh, do you mind if I go first? Sure. Who? I am nostalgia biased. This game has a lot of Super Mario Brothers 3 nostalgia, and I'm a sucker for that game. This game has great levels, great uh just just uh overall design. I like how they use the power-ups, I like how they use the 3D effect. This is actually a really big game for the 3D effect, I think. And uh just just solid game, controls really well. I like how it's like it's 3D, but it's not like a big 3D game since it's a 3DS game, so it's like got like a feel of a 2D game. Oh, just it's this is such a good game. It really is just like a 2D game structurally in 3D, and like not that that's a bad thing by any means because I mean this game rules. No, because I mean, we I I mean we would get Super Mario 3D World out of this. We would get Kirby's mm-hmm. uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land is arguably in that same kind of game. So like. It's yeah. yeah. This this game yeah. this game's great, and it was a trendsetter. I fucking I I I really enjoyed this game. Um, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's it is. This is truly like yeah. Ocarina of Time 3D no. was like the first, but this is truly like the first original. You are 3DS right. game. This is that is the app. This is the game. This app. and then the next the thing that came out literally next the next month. Yeah. Like we'll, we'll get to it. These these two games between back to back months. Oh yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, Ocarina of Time was pretty big, but you're right. No, it was definitely these two games that like put the 3DS on the map. 
without this, the 3DS would have had an even rougher first year. Oh yeah. Um, the price yeah. the price cut helped, but like these were like the games to actually sell it's, the system during the holidays. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. literally Super Mario. Like people loved yeah. New Super Mario Brothers. This is like the this is the new Super Mario Brothers game for the 3DS. Had what if this game came out? I'm I'm we've got a whole podcast, but like, yeah. what if this game came out like at launch? I think the 3DS still would have struggled a bit because of the $250 price, but it would have been done so sure. mu- it would have done so much better, like undeniably. I think they, they would have had way more sales for sure, but yeah, uh, uh, 3D Land, solid, solid game. All right. Um, we'll talk more about it on our 3DS podcast. Moving on, we've got Assassin's Creed Revelations for PS3 and 360 on the 15th. How many games came out this day? This day, we've got mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, five games out this day. One of those- Five one, games that we listed. One, five oh, games oh, okay, that we listed. One of those is actually a game that Jack has been waiting to talk about since earlier in the podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's just do quick smash or pass Assassin's Creed Revelations. Smash. Pass. Uh, I meant pass. We got Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition for 360. Sure, whatever, pass. but pass. Sure. Uh, Rayman Origins for PS3 360. Smash, 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 smash. Say it. Say it. Um, yeah, I love ahead, this game. The I've talked at length about this game in the 2D Platformers podcast. Um, But yeah, this is one of my favorite 2D platformers of all time. A really fucking good game. I wouldn't play it until like the year after um, when I bought it on PSN. I didn't. I actually do not own this game physically, sadly. Uh, but no, it's a really good game. Great art style. Great level design. Great music. Thumbs up. All right. Uh, we got Saints Row the Third for Windows uh, 360 and PS3. I played a bit of this game. I have also played some of this game, not a ton, but some. It's it, um, it's kind of wacky. It it's very wacky. It plays a bit like Grand Theft Auto, but it's a lot more like mission structure based. I think, but uh, otherwise, I mean, it's pretty fun. I didn't play according enough of it to, to really have a solid opinion, but I enjoyed what I played. According to Steam, I have played this for seven point two hours. So. A little That's bit. more I, than those other two games. Combined. I have last I have last played it July nineteenth, twenty fourteen. This is more than Skyrim and Terraria combined. True. Yeah. This um, must be a really good game. I'm curious when the last time I played Skyrim was. May eighth, twenty fourteen. There you go. There, yeah. there you go. All right, and then the last game that came out that we're going to talk about on this day. For PS3 and 360, <laughs> Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Literally, Marvel vs. Capcom year. 3. But, with the, but with the extra content in the same the year. The same fucking year as the Couldn't, original game. I remember people, even were, wait. people were pissed off about this I, when it came out. I'm not surprised. And, like, I, ju- and I, remember at the, I remember at the time having not played the original game. Uh, like, and this game was out, like, Ultimate was out already, and I just kind of, like, quietly bought a copy. Yeah. I mean, let's, uh, let's be real. The version I played. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, fucking phenomenal game. Just, oh, yeah. Just really weird that they released this, it in the same year this, as the base game. This game fucking rules. It's just really like 10 months later oh yeah they put this out it's oh this game's like this game's kind of s- kind of ridiculous super good game though really good roster of characters everybody feels really good to play for the most part it's stylish the combat and the mechanics are just really solid it's just mm-hmm. this game this game is sick i like this game oh yeah you can play you can play as phoenix right in this game yes you That's can right Ace Attorney. Yes, Ace Attorney. Can. He has a fucking super where Maya shows up and she attacks people. Like it's a, that's funny. That's all you need. Um, actually, all you need is a spoonful of is, Mountain Huckleberry Tillamook ice cream. Who is your main in this game? In this game, yeah. Um, uh, my go-to trio was Deadpool, Morgan, and Zero. 
I don't remember who else I rotated around. I always used Morrigan. Like she was. Oh yeah, I love Morgan. Morgan. I love Morgan. Morgan's like really good in almost any game she's in. Oh yeah, yeah. We need a new Darkstalkers and, game, by the and way. And that's not just because she has big boobies. No, she's I'm, just I'm just, she's saying, just really she's just good. Good. She's but yes, usually really good. But I mean, and she has big boobies. I was gonna say, being a hot succubus with big boobs that 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 uh, that's extra points there. It helps. That helps. That helps um, a little bit. I I definitely I remember playing a uh, oh you know what zero from Mega Man uh, yeah that's zero zero he was, he was definitely zero's one. also um, usually really good. Yeah. In these games. I, uh, I wasn't I liked, even like I liked playing a Spider Man. Um, I literally a bunch of others. Spider? No, oh, yeah, Spider Man's in this game. Yeah. Um, a, uh, shit, what was I going to say? I wasn't even like into fucking tears or anything when I was playing this game for the first time. I had no idea that zero was like the best character in the game. Is he? I'm not surprised. Uh, oh yeah. He's like, he's, he's like one of the best dude, for sure. He, he flips around the screen. I'm not surprised. He's crazy. Yeah. Uh, he's always fun. Like, Al says Chris, Virgil and Dante. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Ooh. Spicy. Uh, Landon, did you, Landon, did you mention uh, who you like to play as the most? I didn't play this game, so okay. Damn, I'm yeah. sorry. It sucks. All I right, know. I was I, just, I was I, mostly talking about like experience from other like yeah, Marvel like versus, I'm, I'm assuming Hatsunoko well, yeah, versus Capcom. Yeah, versus Capcom. That yes. makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, a few days later, on the 18th, on Windows, Mac, and Linux, we would get Android and iOS versions earlier this year. But we got uh, the like full, I would say the more full release of Minecraft. The, because like the, have, official, the official, yes, the official, the official release, release of Minecraft. For Minecraft. Biggest because, game of all time. Because my first experience with Minecraft was actually like two years before it officially yeah. released. Yes, I played. I played this in like computer classes when I was in freshman year in high school. So, yeah, like, but yeah, Minecraft, you know, biggest game of all time. It's huge. I've it's you know what I will say, like, if you have like, I don't have the drive to really play it myself. Like, I don't really care to do that very much. But like, if you have a friend that cares about this game and you have like a group of friends that you can play with. Like Minecraft is pretty fucking fun. Oh actually. yeah. Like, like I, I, I think it's hard to argue that this game is not a great game. That's like a cornerstone oh, yeah. of gaming at this point, but it does. It is better if you have people to play with for sure. Like I would way sooner play Minecraft by myself than Terraria. Dude, honestly. I would of all of like the big name games that like everybody fucking hypes to high heaven. Like I'll play Minecraft before like millions of the other games that people like talk about and play all the time. It, it especially is, it's like, good. especially when in Minecraft you can just fuck around in creative mode and just yeah. like build shit. You just do whatever. I my yeah. favorite thing to do in Minecraft, especially after the big update where they added them, is just digging down into the ground, just exploring caves underground. That's like my favorite yeah. thing. I love the caves. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite thing. So like Minecraft is like. You can find something to get out of this game. Like, it's it's great. It has a little something for everyone. It does have a little something. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Landon's um, getting up to check on something, but we uh, nope, he's back. We're so good. we will move on to the last game for this month on the that we have listed on the twentieth. We've got for the Wii, The Legend of Zelda: Skyward Sword. I would like to correct Shut what up. I said. Oh, okay. I would Go like ahead. to correct what I said earlier. Uh, this game actually did come out on a Sunday. For some reason, I remember it coming out on Black Friday, but no, it just I just bought it on Black Friday. Um. Okay, now so I, yeah, it wouldn't start until I suppose later. Yeah, because I know, like, it was at. I know, um. Star Fox 64 3D was the first game that Nintendo put out on a Friday. They did start and doing they, it as like tradition later on, but it wasn't this year that they really started doing that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. You guys want to talk about it at all, or would you rather save your thoughts for the eventual part two podcast I'm, of Skyward Sword? I'm going to uh, save my thoughts for the eventual part two of the Zelda podcast. Okay. This have... game is so fucking good. Uh, don't listen to that podcast, by the way. This game is so fucking good. This is like Jack's favorite game in the series. It's like it's got a boss fight that's really fun. Oh yeah, the, Al's That's talking it. about the good times on GameSpot when the review for that came out. And honestly, oh, yeah. in That's retrospect, in retrospect, the guy that reviewed that game probably the most correct person in the room, and we just didn't know it. Eh. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Uh, we'll move on to December. The first uh, Landon alluded to this game earlier. Released for the 3DS on December fourth. Mario Kart 7. Mario Kart 7, baby. We talk- Mario Kart 7. So we talked about Mario Kart 7 uh, quite a bit on our Mario Kart podcast. Uh, Go listen to that podcast. But yeah, just to, to just to echo what Landon said earlier in this podcast, this is alongside Super Mario 3D Land, like the reason to get a 3DS in 2011. Now, granted, when, uh, you know, it's not like, the most defining game in the series, but it did give the 3DS a legitimate like killer app game to play. And for a 3DS game, like this is an incredible game. So like it also had really like for a Nintendo game, it had really solid like online. Oh yeah. Like it's like Mario so. Mario Kart games have been a little like a little bit better on average for Nintendo's online. Like Mario Kart Wii, not great, but still decent online compared to like Smash Brothers Brawl and stuff like that. Uh, same, same, like you said with Mario Kart Seven, pretty good online. So like, you play so this it game. was like definitely if you wanted like a multiplayer or like online game, this was this was it. This yeah, was for sure. It. I played yeah. it a little bit online. It was pretty good. So yeah. Yeah, uh, we talked about it, though, on our uh, Mario Kart podcast. So if you want to hear our full thoughts, uh, we've got all the pros and cons of that game there. Uh, on the 5th, the very next day for the Wii, uh, a favorite game of Landon's to bring up, we got Fortune Street. Fortune Street, baby. <laughs> the existence of this game is just so funny to me. It it's really like, is. It's, it's Mario, literally... F- <laughs> a Mario, Mario and Dragon Quest crossover where they play Monopoly. There you like, go. That's the pitch. It's perfect. It's, it's so funny. I've not played this game, but I would honestly love to. Like, if uh, we, in the future, when we possibly meet up together, we should play Fortune Street. I think it'd be a perfect it's... game to play. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really funny. Fortune it's, Street it's... is... Fortune Street just conceptually is like that kind of, like, Kingdom Hearts level ridiculous crossover idea that like you yeah. pitch on an elevator and then s- for some reason the execs are just like yeah sure go ahead. Imagine What's sad like- is this isn't even the first one, but this is the first one we got because yeah. there was a ton that released in Japan before this. Mm, that's so. But this weird. is just the first one we got. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Sad because it's <laughs> yeah. so fucking like it. It's so cool. Uh, the next the major thing that came out we got on here on the 8th for the 3DS we got Pushmo Pushmo this I feel like December really started at the 3DS like original like download titles 3DS where like this plus two other games that we brought up, like this is where like we really started to see some like solid releases for the 3DS. Pushmo mm-hmm. being an excellent uh 3D puzzle game uh that like really utilized the, the 3D aspect and it was great. All right. Uh we got on the 14th the remaster of sonic cd released on uh xbox live playstation network android and ios so it was a download title um, yeah it is good made, all my homies hate this game it is made all by right. so uh le- just a bit of context this is made by the same people as the later mobile phone remasters of sonic 1 and sonic 2 and by extension sonic mania as well as uh sonic origins uh he pitched in for so yeah this it started basically cool. like here with Sonic CD. Shout out to fucking Christian Whitehead. That guy's really 
releasing the best version of Sonic CD. That like, guy is okay. just cool I know, shit. I, I know that, like, I'm not the biggest fan of Sonic CD. Like, it's not my favorite Sonic game by any stretch, but this is by far the best version of this game. Uh, it controls extremely well. The physics were tweaked just enough so that it's, like, a little less finicky on, like, so, platforms and shit. Yeah, so Christian Whitehead, he didn't technically use the engine that they had for the old games. He made yeah. his own that is, like, as close to you, like, for, like, the normal everyday person picking up and playing a Sonic game, they're not going to know the difference that this is a different engine. This yeah. is just going to be Sonic CD. But, Which like, this... But, like, this is... It, it comes with a ton, too. Like, you you have, like, a bunch of, like, concept art and shit. You have a... You, you can choose between the American and Japanese soundtracks. Yep. And I love that. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, it, yeah, I don't know. This is, if you're playing Sonic CD, this is the version to play. Yeah, obviously and... this is included in Sonic Origins. So nowadays, I mean, I know people like kind of harped on Sonic Origins, but like it's, it's pretty solid. If you want to play all the Sonic games, uh, it, this is on there. So you can play that good uh landed did you have anything to add about sonic cd i hate this game all my hammies hate hate a little <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just time traveled back just he time tra there he did it ah <laughs> oh <laughs> so uh the next game we have on the list is uh sonic cd the remake by Christian Whitehead. <laughs> oh, I love that game. <laughs> this is the good future. Oh, yeah. Exactly. We must have, I, uh... I live personally in the bad future where I hate Sonic CD, but yeah, I'm sure see, there's a version of Landon that enjoys this game, and see, you, I'm going to beat him up. See, you leaning back and looking at your phone for a minute wasn't you playing Dokkan Battle. It was you destroying the time, the robot generator, and then yes. going, and then you went back, and then... Uh, and actually, I wasn't playing Dokkan. I, I was looking at Twitter. I did not Fair realize enough. this happened literally a day after Sonic CD was released. But, uh, a day-ish. A day-ish. A day-ish. Very we'll late into the evening for our time zones, for the 15th, early on to the 16th for my time zone. Uh, the creation of the Gaming Stooges channel. That's right, boys. We it start. Happened. We started this year, 2011, end December, it, very end of the year. It to this day, there is no con it, and I think it's kind of funny, honestly, that there is no set in stone date that the channel was started because it depends entirely on your time zone. Uh, if in East Coast time, it was somewhere between midnight and 3 a.m. because it was still the 15th on the West Coast yeah. uh, when when this channel was created. So it depends on what time zone you live in. And it that really sounds right because the three of us, sorry, Jack, not you, yeah. uh, the three of us at the time were like, we just stayed up until fucking. Oh, yeah. We stayed up yeah. till oh, yeah. three in the morning, midnight for you. Pretty Pretty like easy, like easy, like that was just like that's when I woke up. That was the norm. Yeah, like I know I didn't, I know I didn't join until like a little less than two years later. But like that was very much the norm for a long time. Yeah. We would frequently stay up until the wee hours of the morning. Like and that, I went to, I went to college at this time. Yep. <laughs> like now, Although, when we made this, I wasn't in college, but. Now I, we like are I was in college, uh, but it was it was after it was during spring uh, winter break, whatever we're, break. We're, we're definitely fully functioning members of society that don't stay up till four in the morning, Eastern. Yeah. So well, uh, okay. Let's I, not I wake up at five in the morning now. Yeah. That's not necessarily true, Cloud. Because over the weekend, when I was playing Paper Mario a shit ton, I was up until four in the morning. Two nights in a row playing Paper Mario. I could never again do that. What the fuck? I, I you know, I'm I know. In, I'm in, I'm in bed by like one a.m. Like that's the very latest, and usually well, I'm in you, bed by midnight. You were 
you work first shift. I do. Like you have an excuse. Like I, I work first and a half, basically. Yeah, you like work, you work up, mid, so I get up at I get up at nine a.m. every All day. Right. Uh, and then we got on the twenty second. <sighs> another game Landon was uh, alluding to. We got the three DS title Mighty Switch Force. I can yeah. love this shit. Good game. Yeah, I love this shit. Uh, Mighty Switch Force. Yeah, I love Dude. this fucking game. I'm in space, Cuba. Still fucking slaps. Oh my god, this game it's, is so... The, please, please, Claude, say the full title. Whoa, I'm in space, Whoa, Cuba. Whoa, I'm in space, Cuba. Thank you. But I played this game recently for the channel again, and it's still, like, this game is still so good. It's a really quick puzzle platformer. I probably beat it, like, three times before the end of the year and it came out on the fucking 22nd of december yeah <laughs> yep. it's, it's like, not a very long game to be it's fair. not but it's so it's so fun it it's is so fun. fun this game rules and then uh last major release for the year on the 29th for 3ds also 6v v <sighs> Um, this was not the first release for it. Correct. Um, this was originally on Steam. This yeah, was the 3DS like, release. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and it didn't release on Steam like the year prior, 2010. Yeah, it was like a. Um, it was either 2009 or 2010. It was like a. Yeah. Jack, look it up. Um, oh but it. it's uh, like 20, 2010. Yep. Yeah, this game is really good. Um, and oh, yeah. like I said, this this. December really felt like the first month where you got really solid 3DS like digital titles and mm -hmm. um like you started getting some of the virtual console with Game Boy titles earlier than this but like this was like for like 3DS like originals or ports um this was the start of it yeah um and for the record, this game rules, and if you love 2D platformers, you should play this game because it's, yeah. it's it's a really unique take on 2D platformers. On any platform that you can play it on. Oh yeah, for but, yeah. sure. But like also it's on Steam for like five dollars. So and like any like toaster of a computer could play this game. Oh yeah. True. My awful laptop that I was using at that time could play it. So all right, uh, so I do want to go around. That's the year. Was there any games that you guys remember playing that were not released in this year that you played during this year? Because I do have a few that I can rattle off. I I, okay, hold on. Can I Before we move on, can I just say one thing? I pulled up the Steam page for V, and on it's <laughs> there is a Steam review here by Landon from <laughs> December of 2011. What's it say? Uh -oh. says, Great game. It's a tough one, but well worth it. Thanks, Landon. And that's it. We appreciate it. I did it. I did it. Although you technically, there's a typo. It's tough on instead of tough one. Tough but on. That's you tough know on. what. <laughs> that's that's part of the course. That's that's <laughs> that seems right. All right. So yeah. Uh, did you have any that you can think of, or do you want me to go first? Um, you can go first. I don't know so, if there's anything off the top of my head. I'm going to have to look at the list. This but. was like my, th my DS cleanup year. I was playing a lot of DS games as well as some like other games like that I hadn't gotten to yet. Uh, I definitely played through Final Fantasy three DS at this time. Uh, I played, I did play mass attack, uh, regrettably. Uh, I played black Pokemon, black and white. Um, I was still playing quite a bit of Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver because that had come out the year before. So I was still playing that quite a bit up until the release of uh, Black and White. I played, um, I want to say I played a decent amount of, I did play Sonic Colors quite a lot because I got that for Christmas the year before. So I was cleaning house on that game. I got all the red rings. I did everything. I 100% complete Sonic Colors on the D on the Wii specifically. Uh, so that was a big thing. Um, I played through... Um, I believe Big Bang Mini was this year. 
Uh, it was, yeah, it was definitely 2011, maybe 2010, but I'm pretty sure it was 2011. Uh, cause they, like I said, I was doing a lot of DS cleanup this year. Uh, so yeah, big bang mini, that was a really big one. Uh, I want to say that also because of that elite beat agents, I played around the same time. So that would be, uh, 2011 as well. Um, I played Kirby's Epic Yarn this year. Uh, I did not get it launch year, which is 2010. Uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn was a 2011 game for me, and that is probably my favorite game that I played that year. Because uh, I I love Kirby's Epic Yarn to death. So, um, yeah, there was that. Oh. Uh, I think you that's most there... of the games I can think of. Oh, and the and the HD version of Sonic Unleashed. Fair enough. Um, I will say there's exactly I was scrolling through the uh 2011 in video games uh Wikipedia page just to see if there was anything I missed. Um there was in fact one game that I you know, it's my own fault. I looked over it. Uh You Don't Know Jack came out this year. Uh the four let's see, Windows, Nintendo DS, PS3, Wii, and 360. Uh, you know, it's been on like there was a version on like the PS1 way back in the day, but like this was like I remember a semi big title at the time, and it's a it's a fun game. It's a fun party game. Who are you? I don't know you. Yeah. You don't, don't know his my name. name. <laughs> uh um, but that's about it. I honestly 2011 was a long time ago i don't remember what the fuck i was like outside of the games that actually came out this year i don't remember what the fuck i was playing that year i had to look at game spot oh my god you looked at your game spot account yeah because i did all those blog posts so i like would write what i played and so i did Oh my god, uh, I just went to GameSpot's website and I'm still logged in. I have what to actually go back gross. and ch- I have to go back and check now. Oh dear. So, I can I can say I played this this was during the time like 2010 was like the start of me wanting to play through all of the Zelda and Metroid games. Like I am also This is where in. like I really started playing through those games. Um, so, like, 2011 was, like, part of my cleanup year for that. And it helped that the 3DS Virtual Console, like, started releasing things right away so I could play, like, Metroid 2 um, and Link's Awakening and stuff that I hadn't been able to play before that. that. But this was definitely, like, a huge cleanup year for those two series for me. Um, so I remember that, and then we talked about a lot of the games like I also played this year uh, while we went through the list. Um, and Arcrise Fantasia, I think I was finishing up my first playthrough, and then we started the Let's Play for it, which was dumb. That was stupid. Have I filled enough time yet? Uh, Close enough. Okay. Yeah, I was just apparently playing a lot of Toho, which tracks because I had played, um, I had gotten into Toho about a year or two prior, and they had Toho uh, 10 Desires, as Jack had, uh, not Jack, Al in our chat had mentioned. Um, so I, that definitely tracks. I have a bunch of like, uh, oh, oh, here we go. Hold on. Hold on. I have a blog that I went super extra about. Games I got in 2011 so far, dated from September 22nd, 2011, uh, says does not necessarily mean game released in 2011. I have highlighted in red if I wasn't playing and wasn't finished, yellow if I was bouncing around with it but I hadn't finished it, green if I finished it, and light blue if I was finished with it but I was still playing it. Here is my list. Advance Wars, Advance Wars 2, Advance Wars Days of Ruin, the bottom the the last two of those i hadn't actually touched so i only bought them big bang mini i was correct about that bit trip saga dragon quest nine sentinels of the starry skies i did get that in that year and i did play a bunch of it um nice elite beat agents i was right there kirby's dreamland i i did play kirby's dreamland that year kirby nightmare and dreamland this was a kirby year for me 
uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn got me on a Kirby kick. So I got Dreamland, Nightmare in Dreamland, Kirby in the Amazing Mirror, Kirby's Epic Yarn, Kirby Mass Attack. Uh, I talked about uh, Ocarina of Time 3D. I did play through a bit of Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. I'm not quite finished with it. I think I'm probably about halfway through. Uh, oh, Mario Kart DS. This was the first time I played Mario Kart DS. I think I got it in anticipation for Mario Kart 7 because I had heard that it was coming out. Uh, no More Heroes 1 and 2. No More Heroes 2 was really good. I liked that. Uh, Sonic Colors DS I did end up getting. Oh, Sonic 4 Episode 1. Uh, and then um, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing I played a bit of, the original one. Uh, Super Street Fighter 4 3D. And then also, uh, I had bought it. I don't think I actually played it until 2012, so I won't mention it. But apparently, I obtained Xenosaga Episode 1 at that time. So that's a lot earlier than I was expecting. Uh, but yeah, that is in September, so that's up-to-date enough for me, besides the holiday games that came out that were probably taking up my time. So yeah, uh, thank you, past fe- me, for chronolo- cro- cro- chronologizing... Um, my previous gaming cool um did anybody want to mention really quick a fate their like top game of the year top couple games um oh do you want to i wonder what jacks is yeah jack is probably going to be the most interesting one because he had a stacked ass year wow I i know you're being i know you're being sarcastic landon am i um, Portal Two, uh, for sure. Pokemon Black and White, uh, Sonic Generations. Uh. <laughs> um, probably, probably, definitely Rayman Origins. Um, I was gonna say that one fifth. Um, probably Batman Arkham City. No, actually, I changed my mind. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Um, I, uh, was trying, I was skimming through my blog to see if I could find, like, anything from, like, previous years that I was playing at the time. I did play Ace, the first Ace Attorney Investigations, uh, at the beginning nice. of 2011. Um, I'm not seeing much else, though. I'm not gonna count, uh, ports, remasters, remakes of existing games for this one. Uh, my top five. I'm not going to do a particular order because I don't know if I can really order these. Uh, but Pokemon Black and White, uh, Super Mario 3D Land, uh, Mario Kart 7, uh, Sonic Generations, obviously. Um, and the last one on the list is probably going to be pretty tough because there are a couple contenders. But I think I'm going to have to lean on a. Uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Barely. Are we just doing the ones that actually released in yes. 2011? Okay. Actually, so... actually, no, wait. That definitely tracks because I was thinking of Bit Trip Saga, but that technically is, even though it's my first exposure to Bit Trip, it's, it, it, it's a compilation of games that came out sooner. So, I mean, that's... No, that... that okay, I got, I got my five. Oh, okay. So Bit Trip would actually go before all of those, but just, it's <laughs> yeah, too powerful. It, P- Bit Trip Saga is too powerful. I had to disqualify it. It was not. That's it fair. was. It was not to disqualify Ocarina of Time 3D. It was to keep Bit Trip Saga from getting on the list. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um. So for games that year, so I didn't. I haven't played Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Nor have I played the original version of Radiant Historia. So I'm not going to include those two. Um, so Pokemon Black version. Uh, the Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. Easy. Classic. Um, probably Bastion. Is a, is a third game. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, um... If we're not doing collections, then I'll skip Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. Tell you what, I'll give you five more. How about that? I'm allowed to have five more? No. Oh, never mind then. Um, oh, 
Okay. Uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Where am I at? I don't even know where I'm at. I think you have... I think you're a four. I think you got one more. Oh, jeez. See, the, the, this game, this year was, like, really good. Yeah, like, this is kind of a sleeper year. Like, you don't really realize just how many good games came out this year, and then you go through all of them. It's like, oh, pretty big year. Because, like, my last slot, I could easily put Super Mario 3D Land. I could put Mighty Switch Force. Probably, I I don't know if Mario Kart 7 would be that high compared to some of these other ones, but, like... That's fair. But, like, those two games... I'd probably put Bastion 6, Mighty Switch Force, and Super Mario uh, 3D Land would uh, be on the list. Okay. Because, like, fucking... Like, Kirby's Return to Dream Land, fantastic. I, Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky, amazing. And then Pokemon Pokemon Black White is great. Um, so yeah. yeah, there's a lot of good shit that came out this there's, year. It's it's a and even shit that we don't care about. Like there's a lot of stuff we did not include in this for time. Yeah. Um, like fucking Homefront One came out this year. <laughs> I have not played it, but I do have a friend that swears by it, and that says that it's an underrated gem. Yeah, even so there's a like, lot of... Even though it's notorious for being very short. I, there's a lot of, like, games that, like, came out in 2011, and I just do not think about how, like, big 2011 is. Oh, yeah, I'm looking. On the regular. Um, yeah. And then last question real quick. Uh, is there any games off the top of your head that were on this list that you haven't played yet that you are interested in playing in the future? I think I talked about a lot of them. I'll just jump in real quick. Uh, some of the PS3 stuff, because this was a really good PS3 year. Like, there was a lot of, like, PS3 things, like, first-party stuff that came out. Little Bay Planet 2. Uh, Resistance 3, Killzone 3, uh, Uncharted 3. Infamous 2. Um, Infamous 2. Uh, so out of those, Infamous 2 for sure is like one I want to play, and Killzone 3. Like th Those two, I would probably say, are the big ones I want to play. And then... Um, yeah, I I, I... I will get around to Dragon Quest Monsters, Joker 2, and uh, Dragon Quest 6, for sure. I gotta say, like, you know... Take out the fact that this was the 3DS's launch year. It the PS3 kind of kicked ass this year. Like it cleaned. It was out. a fucking great like PS3 like release year. Like Just, it's insane. Yeah. Um it's like this is the death of the Wii year. Like you can really feel it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um Even like when you're it would get some bangers later on, but yeah, this yeah, is... Yeah, like, Kirby's Return to Dreamland is probably, like, the last hurrah for the Wii at, before Xenoblade. You have, two, like, honestly, there's only, like, two notable releases for the Wii. Kirby's yeah. Return to Dreamland and Skyward Sword for this year. Like, those yeah. were really the only two notable releases, we, but, like... They were really coasting for most of the year on the hype for Skyward Sword, honestly. Because, yeah. like, you know, a new Zelda game is always a fucking event. Oh, yeah. But it was the anniversary release. That was, It was an anniversary year for for both technically Metroid, but we don't care about that. We don't talk about that, actually. Do not think about that. Yeah, never talk about that. But Skyward Sword was the anniversary release. The, uh, 25th. Was the 25th anniversary? 25th yeah. anniversary. It was the 25th <laughs> anniversary for fucking zelda it was a huge year for that too yeah like you know what you know what else was an anniversary game landon sonic 06 we do not talk about that one either Listen, i mean i haven't played no. i haven't played the game to really say but can skyward sword really be put in the same ballpark as no. sonic 06 no oh i'm God. kidding um, skyward sword is a finished product it is yeah. Although it did have a game breaking glitch in it that they had to patch. They it did, did. they did have to. That is interesting. But 
the game was playable versus the tech demo that got released. Yeah, for sure. In the form of Sonic 06. So there you go. Um, going through these, I think that I would definitely want to get around to... I still don't have a copy of Star Fox 64 3D. I really want to get that at some point and play that. Uh, yeah. I eventually want to get into Dark Souls. Like, it's going to be a hot minute before I get there, but I do want to start playing Dark Souls. There is one thing I wanted to mention because I was curious to see. I, I had a feeling it wasn't because it wasn't included on the list, but I was curious to see if it was, in fact, released in 2011. Uh, Katawa Shoujo, which was not. The English version was released on January 4th, 2012, just barely missing 2011. And also, I learned from Wikipedia just now that Katawa Shoujo is being put on Steam in two days. Like, that's so weird to yeah, like like literally like I, I looked at like the list of releases and it's like it's a different release for like every language that guys, it has and then it's, it's like oh yeah the different languages English, French, Russian, Spanish, Japanese, Italian, and Steam. Wait, Steam? God. And then I saw the date and I'm like, wait a minute, that hasn't happened yet. That's two guys, days from now. Guys, I'm really sorry that we like kind of surprised you with this. But this episode of the podcast is actually sponsored by the new release of Katawa Shoujo. So no, 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 no. <laughs> this is the this is the Redux. This isn't just the sponsorship for Katawa Shoujo. This is the beginning of the Katawa Shoujo stream series. <laughs> oh, no. oh I'm no. a I'm a hard veto that one yeah. boy <laughs> i was gonna say if you want us to keep our twitch channel afloat i don't think we could do that listen well you can you can remove the lewd content cloud remember <laughs> true there's an option to turn it off you can also just censor over true. you can also say <laughs> remember anyway never mind anyway anyway, uh, anyway. so yeah, uh, I think that's everything. Um, we have gone on for about almost two and a half hours, so we don't really have much time left. So we'll catch up with you guys next time. But can I say one thing? You can say actually. One thing. Okay. One thing? So I want to talk about. It starts uh, really... with one thing. I don't know why. Oh. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, after we did the podcast, the last podcast, we took my, not mine, uh, Kari's dad up to Seattle for uh, the Mariners game for his birthday, um, where, uh, you know, we surprised him and we uh, uh, bought up with like a, a billboard uh, that announced, you know, happy birthday for love, everyone. And then we bought a second one. Uh, that announced that uh, Kari and I are having twins. What the fuck? What? Yeah. Wow. That's why. That's why you have that hat. I didn't see yeah. the little what thing the on the bottom. Fuck? I just saw it make it a double. Oh god. God. Okay. Good luck to you. Good luck. Good. Oh. Good luck on two children at once. Right? So, well, went from I, zero this, to two this, real quick. This might be my semi-retirement from gaming studios. Just so you know, yeah. I I will still participate, but I mean, two kids. Jesus. Yeah, that is when when I step off the gas, you will know. You know, know. But yeah. yeah, that that's that's fair. Totally fair. Oh goodness. Well, that's been a big announcement. Uh, we're gonna leave it here, though. We will catch you guys next time. We got our streams that we usually have. We got our Discord. So we'll roll the outro and we'll catch you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.